Hello, my name is Henry Chen, and today I'll be talking about the second lab in physics 2211, which is about motion of a falling object. So similar to our first lab, we're applying Newton's second law, but this time in the vertical direction, which is also known as the motion of a falling object. We will observe the falling motion in real life and then confirm our results with two Python simulations. One we're putting drag force into consideration and the other doesn't. In the ideal world where there is no air resistance and hence no drag force, the only force acting on the ball will, while falling is the gravitational force. However, the real world um, drag force does, it does exist. So the drag force will act in the opposite direction of the object's motion. And since in this case, the ball is dropped and is falling in the negative y direction, the drag force will be acting in the positive y direction. Drag force will eventually even out with the gravitational force, causing net force to come zero, and hence a constant velocity, known as terminal velocity. This is the formula to update the velocity. It is all the same as the first lab, based on Newton's second law, the formula to update position. And the net force, instead of uh, it being zero, it is now a sum of the drag force and the gravitational force. So here you have the formula for drag force. As you can see, it is uh, proportional to the squ velocity squared. J hat is just a direction vector, and B is a drag constant, which will get, get it by uh, through trial and error. And this is the formula for the gravitational force. As you can see, it is simply just F equals MA. Um, so these are the initial conditions. Uh, the, this is the diameter of the tennis ball, mass of tennis ball. Initial velocity is zero, meaning that we're just drop, uh, letting go of the ball and letting it free fall. Delta T would be 0 0.001 seconds how often we'll update our position and velocity. Axis direction is uh, in the negative y direction. Since uh, the ball is falling down in the negative y direction, I feel like it would make sense. So uh, in our graph later, you'll see that the position will become increasingly more negative and the velocity will also be a negative number. This is the graph that I've generated uh, based, on, based on the tracker data, which is the observed simulation without drag force and the second simulation that puts drag force into consideration. So here, here we have my tracker. As you can see, I'm just letting the tennis ball drop in free fall. And this will be our system, which is simply the ball and the earth. And everything else around here could be seen as uh, the surroundings, including myself and the cat, since um, it doesn't play into the experiment or affect the ball in any way. Here we have our first uh, our first Python simulation, which is uh, not putting drag force into consideration. So here you can see the only force that is acting on the uh, on the ball is simply the gravitational force. This is our my second simulation that puts drag force into consideration. So here instead of only uh, the gravitational force, now there is also a drag force which is um, proportional to velocity squared, and F net is the gravitational force plus the um, plus the drag force. So now I'll be talking about uh, possible sources of errors, which includes filming devices. Since we're not using any sort of scientific device, there could uh, easily be a lot of issues with the frame rates and the quality of the recording. And also, we're uh, uh, also, the air resistance should also play a factor. Since we're not performing our experiment in a vacuum, the, uh, the air resistance, air density is different everywhere. So it really depends on the environment. And um, in our model, we aren't really taking that into consideration. Also, the height of the drop uh, also plays a big factor. Since, um, as you can see here, with the model with drag force, uh, it should, uh, as time goes on, the um, drag force should even out with the gravitational force causing F net to become zero and hence causing a terminal velocity. However, we don't really see that here. You can see a little bit, a small signs of it converging, but because the ball landed before it could converge, um, the height of the drop also plays a factor into the uh, accuracy of this experiment. So what does it mean? Uh, velocity versus time and terminal velocity. So on the left, we have a um, a graph of velocity and time for the model without uh, drag force, and this model does put drag force into consideration. And as we norm, um, and as we can see, only the model on the right here that puts drag force into consideration should uh, have a terminal velocity, since terminal velocity uh, is because of the uh, e the net force 
becoming zero in the gravitational force and the drag force evening out. So what if we put a, a different initial velocities and we, instead of it being zero, we give it a negative one to start off with. Uh, so since the formula for the uh, terminal velocity doesn't depend on initial velocity, its initial vo velocity will still stay the same. However, uh, it will converge to the terminal velocity faster if we give it an initial push, as we can see here.